like a little piece of chocolate from last week's episode. Anyway, welcome back to another episode of When It Rays It Pours. I'm Keith Ray. I'm Stevie Ray John. And uh, I I guess I didn't get that when I was cleaning up the apartment. <laughs> nice I just a piece of chocolate. You uh you were you, you you said to me last week, you go, There's no need to defend yourself. <laughs> and then you pretty much lambasted me for the way I'd let the apartment go. You know, pretty much all the areas that aren't this area were in what one could describe as total disarray or, uh, you know, probably jeopardizing uh, a deposit. <laughs> uh, it, w- it was pretty bad. I, I just, I'm, you know, shit crawling out of the sink. The single guy, you know, uh, don't have a maid, you know, I'm not, I'm not flossing like that. Frankly, I don't even floss like normal. So I'm definitely not flossing, uh, flossing a maid. I just, but you know, I did, I took a little time this week. I got in there, got an old dish sponge, cleaned the bathtub. Uh, then I realized that cleaning the bathtub had clogged the drain. So it was like filling with just filthy gross water every time i took a shower so i stopped showering all week while i was fighting with this uh drain basically like i'm not gonna shower until the drain is unclogged and this was not a problem john like you could just get one of those little things that you stick down in there like a bunch of little zip ties attached to each all you other i need to do is pour po- some drain oil in it well yeah that's that's what i ended up having to do uh, because there was no, yeah, it wasn't clogged with hair, you know, it wasn't like a big dreadlock I was pulling out of the Pour half a, drain. Half a jug of Drano. That's what I did. for 30 minutes and flush it with hot water. Yeah, it, it works. That stuff really works. I mean, I was, I was trying everything. I'd plunged it. Uh, I, Why uh, would you do any of that and before using Drano? Well. That's what it's for. I know, but like you can... You can use a plunger for free. I mean, the plunger's paid for, so that's just gravy. You didn't plungage. pay for the Drano either. No, I didn't. I, 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 I found it underneath the sink, and that's right where I, I left it for you. Yeah, and I, uh, I, I didn't realize it was there. But uh, upon cleaning the <laughs> apartment, I found more and more cleaning supplies, and I was like, oh, yeah, they don't go away if you don't use them. Well, I, that Drano is gone because <laughs> yeah. I. I used everything that was left to... See, you see, the clog in the drain wasn't your typical clog. You won't need it again. Exactly. I, we, we only have one month left here at the penthouse. You know, That's the thing. It's countdown to, to greener pastures. But uh, basically, the clog had happened because... You know how when you're wearing new clothes, you get a lot of like fu- little fuzzies you know, in your body hair and whatnot? If you got wear a pair of boxers for the first time uh, or a or a t-shirt for the first time you know you end up with some fuzzies down on the bottom of the tub and basically i w- have been wearing such fresh drip walmart and goodwill drip but still so fresh that it had clogged the drain with the fuzzies from the new clothes this doesn't sound like a moderately overweight person's type of problem it sounds more like a morbidly obese type of problem so i don't i don't know if i fat people have your same issues fat people get the fuzzies and skinny people don't get the fuzzies i don't get all i guess thinner people i wouldn't call you skinny but thinner that's what i said moderately overweight (laughs) oh okay you were the moderately overweight you are uh i would say that i'm like cusping moderately overweight overweight you know uh, if I'm moderately overweight, you're for moderately overweight. Like, in favor of it? No, like, XL, 4XL. So, like, four times? Yeah. Okay, okay. I uh, I don't think that's necessarily the case. But what do you think? Freshly cleaned apartment. Basically, you shame me into doing this. D- can you tell a difference? It looks 
somewhat better than someone might expect if they came through the entrance of these apartments. Okay. Before, it looked a little worse than someone would probably expect. So, you're getting there. Okay. So, it's impressive. It doesn't look like somewhere I would spend the night. <laughs> you wouldn't uh, You wouldn't crash here, but uh, you used to crash here. But Maybe if I had to, I might. Okay. Well, your room is essentially a museum to when you lived in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if there's, I have done nothing but, I don't know, change clothes in there. Although I did start using your half bath. Uh, I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Because I can set my phone on the doorknob and pull the door close enough to me that it's, like, right there in my face when I jerk off on the toilet. So it's like, oh god, you're back to this again. What are you talking? What do you mean? And you used to jerk off on the toilet seat, so your boss would sit in it or something. No, no, like I'm sitting on. I use the toilet to sit on when I jerk off, and I use the and I use the half bath because it's such a small room that when you close the door, like three quarters of the way, it keeps it has my phone like right here. The angle's a little bad, you know. It's a little. But, you know, I don't have, like, maybe, you know, what I could get is, like, a C-clamp and a phone holder. You know how they got those, like, for your... Just uh, stand up. For your... Just stand up? Put the phone next to the sink and just go into the sink. I don't... I'm not, like, coming all over the floor in the bathroom. Well, who sit? You got to sit down? You get that out of breath? <laughs> Are you, are you implying that you, when you jerk long? off standing up? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with jerking off standing up. And I've employed it a few times. In fact, before I had the half bath, access to your half bathroom, I did jerk off standing up because what I'd do is I'd put the phone up on the, uh, on the shelf in my closet. And then just face my closet. You see, that's why I keep the clothes on either side of the closet, nothing in the middle. You know what I mean? So it was like I balance it against a hat right there. Do it standing up. But now that I have the option to sit, of course I'm going to take the option to sit, relax. It's a relaxation exercise. Why can't you sit on the other toilet? Well, the other toilet doesn't have a sweet little phone shelf in the way of a doorknob that literally swings right to in your face you know this is so retarded <laughs> what? you rest a phone on a doorknob six inches in front of your face to jerk off yeah i mean i use my phone because my phone has what would you have done if you grew up in the days of the fucking paper porn oh i did the first porn i had was magazine for sure i was about uh i'm gonna say nine and then like but 10 to how 12 much were you jerking off when you're nine not much but i like to sit around and look at it exactly you know? so you weren't jerking off to it exactly okay so well by the time i started jerking off we'd probably had maybe a few magazines left from those days, and then I would just jerk off in bed, I guess. And then when we upgraded, we upgraded to DVD. It was DVD yeah, before you should have been. Internet. You should have been on DVDs by the time you were getting that. But yeah, but you about, probably couldn't get your hands on that. Well, that's the thing. They became such a hot commodity. I mean, well, because that's when DVDs were getting big and. All kids steal their porn from older people, so the older people that you were stealing it from still had the magazines. So, do you? Uh, and well, and then they had the DVDs. Because by the time you were eleven or twelve, I was. That's I was twenty-one. By yeah, then. exactly. It was all DVDs by then. And there was quite a good I hustle in never DVDs. Even own a porno mag. Did they? Uh, did you guys swap DVDs in high school, like with your fellow classmates? Other dudes in your grade? I don't think so. I always thought it was weird because, like, these cats I knew would bring porno to school, and it's like 
you know that you that they stole this from their dad. So it's like now you mm. know what their dad jerks off to, <laughs> you know? That's hey, what's up? <laughs> He's out there mowing the yard they and you're like, don't "Oh, care cuz they're all sitting around together jerking off in a barn somewhere." <laughs> Jeez. All the people I, I went to high school with parents would get together and jerk off in barns. No, the kids. Oh, the ki- well, yeah, we all we we were all we would have like porn parties. Like yeah, if, I don't know. We it never was like did that shit. everybody had their turn, <laughs> you know. That's hillbilly stuff. Everybody, everybody find uh, a place to sit <laughs> that <laughs> you can't see anyone else. <laughs> you got to you got to you got a dude like half behind the couch, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I never got down like that. But uh, that's neither here nor there. We were talking about cleaning it's, the apartment. I just imagine like they're sitting on. In a barn watching <laughs> por- porno on some DVD player made out of reclaimed wood <laughs> from a barn. <laughs> it's not made out of reclaimed wood. We would have DVD players, but the game changer was the portable DVD player. Oh, no. Here Won't it is. You, they, th- everybody You're thought that the- was like for family vacations. All- that was for preteens to fucking finally get some privacy with some... Four hour long DVD. You're all sitting around jerking off in a barn and you get interrupted by a company that's reclaiming the wood for the barn to make some bar in Malibu. (laughs) In somebody's house in Malibu. Yeah. 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 I got this, all this wood from a reclaimed bar in a barn in Indiana. It's from the 1600s. They just tore it down last week. (laughs) Those motherfuckers still used it. The barns that I hung out in as a teenager, the barns that you that jerked rickety. off in yeah, with well, your friends. <laughs> I tell you, man, you give you an inch, you take a fucking mile. It's like <laughs> I concede that we did some weird shit in barns, but I don't know. I don't think that it was like I don't remember ever jerking off in a ba- in a barn, fucked in a barn. A lot of drugs in the barn. A lot of drugs. <laughs> Barns are actually a great place for children to get <coughs> fucked up. If you think about it, they're relatively safe, too. Because most barns uh, are really just, like, places where somebody left an old car. You know, there's not a lot of machinery, really, in most of these uh, old barns. There's a lot of, like, hay and animal shit on the floor. You can throw at each other. So it's a good place, and frankly, like I am starting, like as a man of some years now, like I'm almost thirty years old, I'm realizing more and more that drugs really are just for children, you know. Like, sure, you need a little, you need a little booze, you need a little pot. That's just to get through life. But like, maybe some mushrooms if you need a little reset, or just want to get a little silly. But like. Or it's Saturday night. Yeah. <laughs> Acid, Molly, Coke. These are for children. You know? For people who have nothing going on. You know? It's it's designed... They're, desi- they're designed to consume time, right? To, they're entertainment. That's what drugs are. So, like, once you have a certain level of shit to do, you can't be fucking around with that mess. Can't like be hanging what, out in a barn. Like what type of shit? Cleaning your apartment? Yeah, making your own television show, producing your own podcast. I mean, uh, well, we, I, we, I mean, I hire out most of the production, but uh, other than that, yeah, I have a lot of things in the works. I'm, I'm, I got a show going on. I'm buying a camper because, like I said, we only got a fucking month left here. Got to have something to live in. So, uh, and also with me making the show, by the way, I've great news on, uh, the, uh, sh- the pilot front. Uh, I've confirmed both my guest stars and one of my guest stars, I actually have a shoot date, uh, for confirmed with location and, uh, production. Uh, so that's fantastic. Everything's moving in the right direction. Th- but this week I go buy, uh, buy a camper because, 
uh, I'm gonna need a trailer uh, for myself for the star of the show. Star of the show always has a trailer that they get to sit in between takes and stuff. And sure, I mean they're gonna need me uh, because I'm also directing and I'm co-creator and head writer of the show as well. So I mean, sure. I won't have a lot of time in between takes to just kind of sit in a little portable. Uh, I, that's the thing is like, it is a camper technically, but really it's, it's more of like a trailer. You know, if you think about it in Hollywood terms, that's definitely what you would be sitting in waiting for uh, your time in front of the camera. So I'm going to prefer to think of it as a in trailer. Hollywood terms. Yeah. You know, big uh, movie stars, I was TV stars, like trailer park terms. Well, no, a That's trailer. That's more the vibe I get when I look at you. But but like in in a trailer park, you'd have like a like a a single wide modular kind of home situation. Not really like a like a pull behind a truck trailer that doesn't that don't, those don't trail anything. You know, but with a trailer, you can, can pull it behind a truck. You can't pull one of those big single wides behind a truck. You could, yeah. I before don't think they so. they put them in the ground. But before the, like before they're lowered onto the cement blocks that oh. are the foundation. Why do you think they call them trailers? Trailer parks. Well, I figure that's how they're brought there is on a trailer. Yeah, they don't call them single wide parks. Well, no, because that would be an awful slight to all the people who invested in a double wide trailer which definitely if you're gonna live in a trailer permanently the kind of trailer that i've got you might not want necessarily although i do plan to live in it permanently but i just thought yeah permanently what happened to the uh pallet house i don't want to have any real estate here in indiana thinking about uh buying land somewhere down south for the pallet house Go to Texas. Uh, well, I'm, I'm definitely going to be going to Texas sometime next year. Got a big movie I'm going to make. Uh, first feature film. I feel like go straight from the pilot to the feature film. Uh, next thing you know, private jet, house in Malibu, where I import the barn I used to get high in for pieces uh, to make a bar in my uh, guest house. You know, you it's like all, to LA. it's all that trajectory. Well, I mean, it depends on how, once you have a certain amount of money, it's, it behooves you to keep a place in multiple cities. You know, you keep that little piece of land outside Lake Charles. That's just got the pallet house on it where, uh, you can just kind of escape to, uh, anytime you want, you keep a place in whatever thriving, uh, comedy scene you want to be a attached to whether that is in new york austin new york uh or uh la then of course uh you know the mansion in malibu i mean that's just good sound real estate investment and an awful mighty flex on anybody who ever doubted me Mm -hmm. i think i would just have one place and then just where if you want to go to any of those other places you rent wherever you want rent a house or fuck it it really like i said it really depends on how hotel. big of a success you are and i don't mean uh how fat of a success you are <laughs> i'd keep motel six in your roll of decks so for a while it's like no listen to this fucking prince was doing an album he rented a house from this NBA star, Carlos Boozer. Okay. And uh, so he's rented it out for like, I don't know, $50,000 a month or some shit. I mean, it's a mansion, but Carlos Boozer's, it was a house he had in a, the city he played in or... Not really his hometown. Or just vice kinda. versa. Either during the season when he wasn't at his regular house or it was the house he lived in during the season. One of the two. So anyway, he's in town and drives past his house and he d- 
doesn't even recognize it. And then he thinks about it. He's like, didn't I just drive past my house? He drives back. Prince had painted the entire house purple. <laughs> redone all the interior with purple and gold, like flooring, ceilings, everything. Fucking the sim- his little print symbol all over the house. <laughs> and the dude was renting it for like three months and had all that work done. <laughs> I wonder how Completely long... Completely redid this m- gigantic mansion how? with a basketball, indoor basketball court because we know Prince loves basketball. But, <laughs> so, <laughs> Carlos Booster's going to sue the shit out of him. Like, he's suing him. And... Prince just says here, it's fix th- it back. Three million bucks, just <laughs> fix it back when I'm done. He wow. stayed there like four months, three or four months or something. It's crazy because like how long it would take to get a, an overhauling job like that? That's money. That is money. <laughs> that's not having a house in Manhattan and Malibu and Texas. That's I can rent a house for for a hundred thousand a month or whatever. And then pay basically pay for the entire house after I leave just because I completely ruined it. Well, I don't know. If you find somebody who really likes purple, you know, it might no, be. No, Carlos Boozer wanted to come back to oh. his house. Oh. Well, that's too bad. So that's what I mean. <laughs> he paid for all the renovations to be redone. Plus, here's because... Carlos Boozer is going to have to go through the time and effort of getting people out there to do the shit. Oh, yeah. But that's just fucking one of my favorite stories. Look. It's a real flex. I heard that uh, one time he was really mean to uh, Sinead O'Connor. Uh, apparently it was some kind of beef within their management that spawned this. Uh, but before... I found I was reading the article all about Sinead O'Connor's just like putting uh, Prince on blast for being weird one time. Uh, yeah. And if it wasn't for him, she would have had a fucking career. Well, that's the thing is like I wouldn't. You can't be mad at Prince because he made your career, but also if I was Prince, I wouldn't uh, be fucking. Weird with that bitch over management. It would be how she totally fucked up my song. (laughs) Like that song. Her version of Nothing Compares to You is the worst version out there. I don't think it's bad. I I think she did good. She's got a good voice. Or had one back then. I don't know now. Yeah. I don't think she ruined it. I don't know, man. Uh, That's just, that's a really good song, you know? The song you introduced me to, and since then I've found like pretty much every cover of it and listened to them all. And I gotta say, I I oh, like I... Prince's version way better than hers, and his version is not the most popular by any stretch. Hers is the most popular, yeah, by far. which is crazy because I no, that's my out point. of all of that's those. The point is a lot of those people that covered it were probably covering it from her, not even knowing that he wrote it until yeah. they wanted to do it. Yeah, isn't that you know crazy? Yeah, it just didn't. It did, hers like, doesn't hit me. I don't. It's I don't not feel even, the soul it's of even the song. Worse than uh, I will always love you. Like a lot of people will still know that's Dolly Parton, and uh, Whitney Houston covered it. But that's another one where it's like the cover is way bit. I mean, it wasn't one of Dolly's biggest hits. No, it, it wasn't. definitely wasn't one of Prince's biggest hits, but. She did it, dude. I won't hate on her for it. Shout out know. to her for liking good music. Yeah, and ripping up that picture of the Pope, you know. I mean... Uh, Are you not Catholic anymore? No, dude, I told you. I haven't uh, been Catholic in like 16 episodes. Uh, I don't pay attention to you that much. I became a Buddhist, uh, Christian Buddhist, uh, Lutheran Christian Buddhist, uh, I think... Last time I, I haven't really, I mean, I did, I did meditate the other day. That was nice. Uh, studying, uh, Buddhism, uh, with our dad, you know, uh, which is great. 
you know, the atheist Buddhist, the, the world's angriest Buddhist, also. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, I sent him his all his sealing gear. I got him. <laughs> Haven't heard from him. <laughs> I told him I got it before he <laughs> had all those troubles. Man, maybe he'll let me use the hat. <laughs> Write a Probably. sketch or something about a sailor. No, I got him a nice little spyglass, too. Leather, wrapped, everything. <coughs> Probably not the best spyglass, but it looked <coughs> looked legit. Yeah, no, uh, definitely. And, and, like, why, why did we opt for the binocular over the spyglass in development of seeing faraway technology, do you think? Do you think, is it really that... I think it's better depth perception or um, maybe see more. Yeah, I guess because... Probably your widens, your vi- widens it. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, uh, you could do... You look cooler with the with the looking glass. With the... What, what's it called again? Spyglass. Spyglass? Yeah. But, I mean, a lot of rangefinders are one eye and... That's uh, true scopes for rifles and shit yeah they're one eye i mean and but there you go uh but also all looking glasses to watch the opera two eyes which by far the coolest binoculars are the opera binoculars you know it's kind of like it's like a monocle meets binoculars you know but not the monocle that you actually like keep. Like, nobody actually really ever walked around with a monocle in their eye all the time. That would be really distasteful. It's you have one out. hanging on a little on a little string or on a uh, what's it called on a chain, and then you bring it up to the eye as needed. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, you want to hear another one. Tiger Woods' wife, after the divorce, got one of their houses, bulldozed it to the ground, and built a new $10 million mansion where it stood. Well, she probably was like, uh, this is a house where I have a lot of memories of thinking my husband wasn't getting his dong shellacked by every chick he could. No, it had some house. kind of termite problem. Oh, okay. It wasn't an emotional thing. She just chose to... No, it was I have more money than anybody should ever have. Type of thing. Oh, okay. I don't give a fizzer. Well, that's one of the reasons I'm getting the trailer, you know. is like, that's going to be paid off. First day. Day I get it. It's paid off. Now, all my money that would go to rent... Is going towards fixing up the trailer and living fat as fuck. Don't you gotta pay rent for where you keep the trailer? The camper? I'm working on that. I'm trying to find a place where somebody will just let me keep it slash live in it without having to give them any money. Now, I understand this is gonna be difficult. But are you gonna need water hookups and all that shit? Hell no, dude. That's what a gym membership is for. Buy what about jugs of sink water. and shit like that? You buy jugs of water. And also, I'm going to hook up a rainwater uh, shower for emergency situations. You know, like, what if I accidentally set myself on fire or something like that? Are there any lots open where uh, Chad leaves at? No, I don't uh, think that this trailer that I'm going to get would be allowed into that camper park. They actually have a rule about how new... A camper has to be in order to rent a space uh, for any length of time in the park. So, like, you so could, this one's too new. No, it's it's old. Oh, it's too old. Okay. Yeah, it's too old. You fucking knew it was too old. Oh, this is too. Oh, you got one that's too spanking new. No, of course it's going to be an old fixer upper, but I'll be able to fix it up. You know. Not paying to live in a shooting gallery anymore. <laughs> Which, 
I'm looking forward to this last month, man. This is like the season finale of Survivor, you, okay? You, you use, <laughs> I just got to get through it. Use all that spare time that you had for cleaning to fix up your new camper instead. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All the time Here's I Here's the thing. Whenever you turn on Larry Sanders, just turn up the volume and walk around and do a little cleaning. I, I do some cleaning. I clean the fucking apartment. What do you want from me? It's clean. But it, dude, check out the countertops. Check out the oven top. Sink was gross. No, that's because I'm no fucking paper the goddamn anywhere. The, the fucking garbage disposal is broken. What do you want from me? I've got to fucking get it fixed. <laughs> I'm gonna go pick up that new fancy camera you got and take a walk around, and we'll see how <laughs> clean it is. We could we could do that at the end uh, of the episode. We could take the camera around. The, like Plus, part of it you is play that while they roll the credits. Not cleaning. It's just removing uh, <laughs> removing furniture to use for your video shoot tomorrow. <laughs> that doesn't count as cleaning. Just removing items. Look. Yes. It, it, I'll go out and look at the back of your truck. All the mess that was on that table is probably still on it in your truck. No, it's on the couch. Okay. Real clean. Uh, but yeah, it's... It's cleaner than it was the last time I was here. The last several times. I moved the... I do need the uh, coffee table for my shoot. So I put it in the truck. And then I was in like, the oh. back of the truck? No, in the, well, in the back of the cab. In the back seat of the truck. Oh, it's a, it's a it's four a, seater. Okay. Yeah. So I put it in the mm -hmm. back of the truck, and then I came back up here, and I was like, "God damn, John was right. I really do need to run the vacuum." And then I ran the vacuum, and I'm talking about an hour of vacuuming because I mean it was that bad. You know, I went over it, and I was like, "Eh, I'm gonna do that again." You know, so I, I went over the whole carpeted area of the house. Just not this room because it's not it doesn't need it. It's the only r room that's we keep r very clean, you know. No, first rule about carpet. What's that? Everywhere needs it. You're probably right. I probably should have vacuumed in here, but there's a big <laughs> fucking table in the middle of the room. That's why at the house we ripped it all up. Yeah. Carpet's a bitch. Yeah, and they do have, it's they've nasty. done some really wonderful things in the world of brooms. I don't know if you've seen some of these brooms that they've got out there these days, but like. I Yeah, I have. <laughs> I know you haven't. I've seen a lot of stuff that you use to clean. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. We clean at the house. Well, I'm, I mean, I clean. I clean the fucking place. What do you want? It's got a little clutter on he the said, bar. I've been plunging the the uh, shower. And yeah, I plunged the shower. Doing all this. I then I opened the closet. You haven't even opened that closet to know that there's all that shit in there. What Used for cleaning. Oh, the the one in the other room? In the hallway? This is where all the fucking cleaning shit is. Oh yeah, I don't know. There's, there's. I would have if I knew you weren't ever gonna use this shit. I would have just took it with me to the house. You could still have it back. Oh, I just will. Don't, just don't I'll take my it. stain remover. I bought that shit. No, I take that back. The lady downstairs gave it to me. <laughs> yeah, I got a big stain what on happened? my new white so shirt. You got and some stain from all that jerking on the toilet. No, I was eating. Uh, that's the one good thing. If you're sitting on the toilet and you're jerking, you can fucking just go right into the toilet. I never do that. I just. I used use to the, when I was a kid. Yeah, you jerk off into the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, that's hot. I'm fucking looking at a fucking toilet. I'd rather look at digitalized fucking. No, I have, would have a magazine or something. Oh, okay. So you're looking at the magazine. And then just. Bust one off in the toilet bowl. Yeah, you just, when you're getting ready, you just fucking. 
then it's shove kinda, it down. It kind of slowly slides down the wall, of the bowl, like the. Uh, no, like you the go cleaner. into the water. You, oh, in the water. You stand up a little bit, <laughs> aim it. Hell yeah. Right dude. into the water. No cleanup. I tell you, one time I jerked off underwater, which took forever. But when I finally came, it was like, it looked so cool. I fucking came all slow motion. <laughs> yeah, I never did that. <laughs> I it's jerked off cool. in the shower, but I never fucking jerked off in standing water. It's <laughs> disgusting as fuck. Yeah, it is. Then you're just bathing in it. Well, rolling around doing the breaststroke and fucking. Oh no! You just get out of acting the pool. like a synchron synchronized swimmer in your own jizz. <laughs> Jesus. Well. <laughs> uh where were we? Where, where did that come from? I don't know. Mostly we've just been talking about how gross you are. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I, you said I can have back my cleaning products that I graciously gave you and you never used. But I couldn't take the stain remover that the lady from downstairs gave you. Yeah, because I need that shit. Because you clothes. jerk off onto everything. No, that's not why I need it. I was eating manicotti and meatballs. And oh, this I, is back in your Buca de Beppo days. This is okay. back in the Buca days, and I dropped a whole shell of cheesy meat and shit onto my fucking shirt. Brand new white shirt, naturally. You, I can't keep a fucking white shirt, dude. Like, fucking, look at what happened to the white shirt I had on uh, down in Seymour last week. You know what I'm saying? That one ended up as a fucking piece of toilet paper. This white shirt was like a nice white shirt. I had it for one day. I'm surprised you didn't just eat the shirt. Why would I eat the... Come on, man. That, no, all that eat. good Italian goodness all over it. Well, at, I did lick the sauce off the shirt. Who doesn't... You know? Because <laughs> uh, I had to take it downstairs immediately and get it in the fucking like, washing machine. What? Why would I eat the shirt? I don't know. Why would you use a shirt as toilet paper? Well, that was in a situation where there was no bathroom and I had shit my pants. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the things can have other utility. You know what I'm saying? Like, a shirt can be a bib, apparently, or a fucking piece of toilet paper, or you can use it as clothing. It's kind of expensive when you use it as toilet paper, except for that was a shirt out of, a, like, a pack of nine, but... Still, From a gas station, probably. I only have Flying J. white shirts last me a fucking day at best. Sometimes I'll have a white shirt last long enough to wear it as an undershirt where you can just see this part of it. It's almost like a it's like a full size ascot. <laughs> <laughs> because like the whole stomach of it'll have like a big gravy stain or something. Just, Don't know why gravy. What? But what, you like, save those for when you wear your uh, V-neck sweaters? <laughs> I mean... That I you dress up in? I when wear, do you wear a white <laughs> undershirt with some dressy clothes? With a button-down shirt a lot of the time. Or uh, when I was there for a while, I was just wearing that Ralph Lauren jacket all the time. So I, would, I could wear a shirt with a huge mustard stain right here. Uh... But it's completely covered because I got the jacket up like this far. And even Zip if I unzip the jacket, you know, if the stain was like over here or like right up here, it's not going far enough over yeah. that it exposes the stain. So. You still had full coverage. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll try and get more than one use out of a white shirt. But I like as far as just having a clean white shirt that i can wear by itself yeah one day at a time you know well you both those white shirts you had more than one use out of yeah yeah i did you wore it and wiped your ass with it that's two uses you wore it and used it to stop manicotti from falling on your bare, bare chest, chest. <laughs> That's, would have that's been way two, better. That's two Which uses. Which would have been way better. Why didn't I? Why don't I just eat with my shirt off? When I'm at, I was eating that shit as alone as a human being could ever have been. Like when you're ordering from a restaurant that only cooks family style, 
for yourself alone, sure, you're clearly doing well financially. But, like, yeah, you're alone. Just, you're, that's a whole other level should of just alone. have a backpack filled with those bibs they give you at lobster restaurants. <laughs> Dude, my stepdad one time fucking... He was uh, working at a, a music store, audio store. And uh, they would do a lot of business with, like, Colts players, Pacers players and shit. Okay. So he's going out to... Uh, I don't know. I'll just go ahead and say He's going to do this job at this guy, Tony Saragusa. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you know him. He's, yeah, Big Tony from... Uh from the Colts. Played for the Colts, Ravens. He was in 25th Hour. Yeah, no, he's a big, bad motherfucker. Uh, and he does commentary or whatever. So he was going out to his house to set up some audio equipment. Oh, okay. Uh, and it was a night job. Like, it's after hours. But that's when he wanted them, wanted them to do it. So they're doing it. You know, it's a high client. High profile uh, client. Yeah. And a big job. B- and big, big money. money. Yeah. Yeah. So he goes out and he's hitting the doorbell, knocking on the door. No answer. So it's just like, well, what's what's going on? Goes, looks in the window and this someone somewhere to you, you know, about six foot, 350 pounds. Defensive lineman. <laughs> He's I'm not either of those things. I'm five eleven and under three. Three forty five. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Well, he isn't that big. Tony. Either. He isn't Saragusa. that big either. He's about How three. Do you say he's his about three hundred. Saragusa. Tony Saragusa answers the, goose. the door. The big goose. He doesn't answer Fucking, the door. Oh, he doesn't answer the door. No. So my stepdad looks. Kind of looking around. I mean, there's lights on. That fucking doesn't look like nobody's home. And he's got an appointment. He looks in the window. And this dude is sitting on his couch. The TV's on, blaring. And he's got a shotgun next to him on the couch. And he's eating a bowl of just like pasta with his hand. Barehanded, just out of huge, like a big, huge salad bowl or serving bowl. Okay, like just, a mixing bowl, like some <laughs> somebody like somebody serves some popcorn in. Yeah, just all this. It was there sauce. I think it was just probably like spaghetti and shit, spaghetti and spaghetti sauce or whatever. Oh my god! So this guy doesn't use a fork, and clear. See, but he he was thinking ahead. With the no shirt. Yeah, like he was just in those boxers on watching TV with a shotgun with a bull full. But, I mean, those guys, they they work out a lot and, uh, you know, they expend a lot of calories, but they have to stay big for their – like his position, nose tackle, defensive tackle. He's the middle of the line. He's supposed to be big and take up two blockers, you know. Yeah. I mean, we all know you gotta you gotta eat a lot yeah. when you de- require a lot of energy, you know. But you always remind me of that story a lot. Because I because I, I like to sit alone with no shirt on eating Italian food. I I think the no shirt thing is gonna be a new permanent rule. Just no shirts yeah. when, when if, we eat. With, with red it's sauce gonna, and you never be hard to go out to eat. You're never gonna eat at this table. No, I don't. So I've had uh, no guests. I had an apartment for well, an entire that year. Mean you can't eat at a table. Five, five people <laughs> come by the whole year. No, the only reason you sit around a table and eat is with a per- with people. Or so you don't ruin your white shirt. You know, I never thought of it that way. But, like, having a table to eat off of might allow me to wear white shirts for more than one day at a time. Yeah. Yeah, that's the sad thing about your lease coming up. I didn't stay here long enough to give you more life lessons. Yeah, you know, we, uh, it's the end of an era. 
you know the the post pandemic uh swirl you know <laughs> it's like we're I just feel like when we got out of this place, we just shake it off. You know what I mean? Just kind of shake off this place. Uh, I just hope you can last the next month and a half. Yeah, I know, right? Like, if I... <laughs> I'm just going to keep just my head keep down. keep your head you know? down. <laughs> I'm just keeping my head down, dude. Like, uh, like you're I'm, boisterous and outgoing and like to talk to people you shouldn't always be talking to, maybe. Well, I got told to put a shirt on the other day. I tell you about this? No. Well, yesterday morning, I was taking the trash out. Uh, but I was up early, you know, way before anybody else is up uh, in in the neighborhood. So I'm walking through the uh, parking lot with a bag of trash. And this guy's like, God damn, put a shirt on, man. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what's the big deal? And he was like... Man, don't be coming. There's people live here. And I was like, yeah, I'm one of them. Do you live here? And he was like, no. And I was like, what the f-? He's visiting someone. I don't know. People these days. No well, I mean, I would tell you to put a shirt on if you were walking around the apartment without a shirt on. But oh, my shirts have been your fucking brother. covered in sauce. <laughs> No, that's crazy. Some dude was offended from seeing your bitch tits. No, I don't think that was it. I think he would have told anybody to put a shirt on. I don't think it was because I was fat. I think it was just because I'm like, oh, well, it's not against the law for men to go shirtless. That's one of the last things that we're. Do you think it was because I was fat? I don't know. I don't I think would, it didn't. Ca- I didn't catch that vibe. I, he was super fat. If I was, well, yeah, that's probably isn't it then. I don't think it was the fat. Like, what do I you think? Like, like he was fatter than me. You're trying to entice some young girl with your sexy <laughs> body or something? Like, well, they're saying dad dude, you're bods taking are the trash in, out. They're saying dad bods are in. Yeah, I was just kind of. Uh, dad bods, yeah, not dad dead bod. bods. Dad bod. That's what I've got, bro. Not, got dead, like, not dead bods. Dad bods. I've got like a guy who plays golf for his only exercise kind of body. You know what I mean? Your guy that has diabetes way too young type of body. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh, man. Type 2. I'll quit cutting you up, but yeah, I don't get why that uh, type dude. <laughs> type 2. Why would that dude say that? Like, yeah. Dude, just, just get like, in your car and get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I was like. He wasn't, yeah, he was leaving, and he was like, God damn, put a shirt on. Like, like, if I would have been taking the trash out and saw him walk out without a shirt on to get in his car, I would just walk past him and throw my trash in the Yeah, thing. I wouldn't have thought anything of, even if he, as... Just fucking get it out of here, dude. As a big fat guy. But you see, I while I told the guy to get bent or whatever... It didn't come to like him shooting me with a firearm. It could have, though. You should have just said, oh, fuck, I forgot. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I forgot to put on a shirt. I didn't know I was going to run into the fucking shirt police <laughs> down here <laughs> in the parking lot. If you really wanted to be funny, you should have took the trash bag, emptied it in the dumpster, pulled it over your head, and wore it as a shirt to go back up. Oh yeah, you're right. Like, like pulled your out. pulled your head through like Ace Ventura uh, two when he gets shit out by the rhino. <laughs> Do you remember when we worked? We worked at the restaurant uh, on Seventy First Street back in the day, and GT South. Yeah, back in the GTs days, there was a dude got a job. I don't know if he got a job through who he got a job through at the restaurant. It was a friend of a friend. Uh, his name was, I believe, uh, the American version of Hefe. Uh, but he was working in the dish tank, and he got soaking wet on his clothes. Like, he, there, we had dinner rush, and through the course of the rush, mm. he was soaking wet with his clothes. Oh, and Jeff. He, <laughs> yes, yeah. Jeff. Okay, I didn't... We're not... No last names here. We're just... But Jeff... He soaked himself 
And then he he was like, I can't take this anymore. And he went and got a fucking trash bag and he cut holes in the side and a hole for his head. And a, he just turned it upside down. And basically, like you were saying, and he put that on and he had a rope tied around the middle of it. So it was cinched up in the middle like an apron. And then it was like so hot. <laughs> he starts sweating. So yeah. bad. Yeah, you got a fucking. A I sweat, thought he was gonna die. Uh, you got a fucking wrestler's fucking weight cutting suit on. <laughs> yeah, dude. What do you expect in the middle of a summer in like, a hot kitchen? If your if your clothes were dry, and you put the bag on so you wouldn't get the clothes wet, you would still sweat through well, this them. This guy was a little bit of a odd odd ball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Fucking he was cosmonaut, the, dude. He was from another. The best planet. man or something at our buddy's wedding. Yeah, I remember. And he showed up. They had a very <laughs> specific outfit. Yeah. It wasn't tuxedos. It was it was an outfit. khakis and a white button-down shirt. Yeah. He showed up in black dockers and a blue shirt. <laughs> Yeah. Light blue button down shirt. He had the boots. So not only did what you wear not match and look terribly awful, but it definitely didn't match anything anybody else in the wedding party had. Yeah, they had like all the girls wore the same dress and then the and with a color scheme that was like identical to the to the groom side and then the bride and groom had like one thing changed. So that it would pop, yeah, like they it was supposed would be, to be just all khakis and white button down, and like and he, he had a tie. The, the groom had a tie, and then exactly know, it was like, like one little thing, and like and so and showed up late. <laughs> he just wore the complete wrong thing. He's he was his hair was freshly combed though. Have you ever noticed this about kind of space cadet people? They like to keep a comb. But no. I will say that dude is a good luck charm to me because uh, me and Kelly ran into him at the horse track one time. And right before I left, I hit $500 on one race. Oh, nice. So you think Jeff was your good luck charm? <laughs> uh, All I know is that guy was the person in my lifetime that made working in a dish tank look the most miserable. Like I like he quit, well, you, he you quit make, after just a few days. You make it miserable for yourself, you know. I mean, I was never <laughs> on the dish tank, but I know what it entails. It can be pretty easy. It can be relatively easy. Yeah. You just got to get a system. You got to figure out how to shoot the water without getting it all over yourself. Learn your you angles. You have to know how to not be a slob, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How You got two things. Get food off of plates and sanitize them. And don't be a slob. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I've, mm, uh, I've managed much to for keep... Some. It is too much for some people, you know, the people <laughs> that think, uh, like, why hasn't anybody ever thought to wear a garbage bag? <laughs> I bet I'm on to something here. Probably because they figured out you could just wear two aprons and it wouldn't be as hot. Yeah. Yeah. And two if aprons. If you're spraying more than this part of your body, you're doing something wrong. Dude was soaking. He looked like he had gotten out of a pool in the rain. Like, he was drenched. And it's just that look on his face. Because when you're bussing tables and you bring somebody a dish in the dish tank, there's going to be a point in the night where they're like, <sighs> another fucking dish. Every time I get, I think I got them all done, you're bringing me another dish. Yeah, that's your job. That's how it's going <laughs> to work until they say, go <coughs> fucking home. That's how it works. At this job, right? So, I I think we might have been an hour into the dinner rush. And just the look of despair. Because he'd already snapped and decided to 
<laughs> make his out, make his little slicker, his raincoat <laughs> out of fucking garbage bags. And he was just like, when is there going to be a moment that I don't do dishes? Not until after most of these people leave this building, bro. <laughs> That's how it is. Uh, but, uh, you know, I bet you he eats at a table. Mm, probably most of the time. Do you want to call it? Yeah, I'm good if you are. Yeah. All right. We're good. I didn't have any uh, thing else.